Good day, Ma'am Castile Kaid Pamintad. I'm Christelle Castillo of BSRT 3D. And today, I will demonstrate the different projections of the lower extremities. And before we start, I will show the different image receptor that I will be using. The first one is 8 by 12. The second one is 10 by 14. And the third one is 14 by 14. And the last one is 14 by 17. So our first projection is foot AP action. So the patient is sitting at the radiographic table and flex the knee on the affected side enough to rest freely on the radiographic table and to position the part, place the patient foot to the IR and center it to the third metatarsal and adjust it so that the long axis is parallel to the long axis of the foot. So the central ray is perpendicular to the IR Entering to the base of the third metatarsal. And the structure shown is talus, metatarsal, and the phalanges. Our next projection is foot lateral, lateral medial. To position the patient, the patient is in supine position. and turn the patient into the unaffected side until the affected leg and the foot are laterally placed to position the part elevate the knee enough to the patella perpendicular to the horizontal plane and place a sandbag to the knee for the support. Center into the middle area of the foot and adjust it to the long axis parallel to the long axis of the foot. And the central ray is perpendicular to the IR, based on the third metatarsal. And the structure shown is, it demonstrate the foot, ankle joint, and the distal ends of the tibia and fibula. Our next projection is foot AP action composite method. To position the patient, the patient is in standing upright position to position the part, place the IR on the top of the foot of the patient have the patient placed opposite one step backward for the exposure of the fourth foot and one step forward for the exposure of the calcaneus to prevent the superior position of the leg shadow. The center ray for the first exposure is at the base of the third metatarsal. And the center ray for the second exposure is the posterior surface ankle. And the structure shown is the bone of the foot. Our next projection is AP oblique lateral rotation and medial rotation. The first one is the AP oblique lateral rotation. And to position the patient, the patient is in supine position. And flex the knee into the affected side enough to rest the sole from the table. 
and to position the part. Put the IR under the patient's foot. Parallel to its long axis and center it to the midline of the level base of the third metatarsal. And rotate the leg laterally until the plantar surface aims to 30 degrees on the IR. The center ray is perpendicular to the IR based on the third metatarsal. And the structure shown demonstrate the first and second metatarsal, medial and intermediate uniforms. The next one is the AP oblique middle rotation. And to position the patient, the patient is in supine position. Next, the knee into the affected side enough to rest the sole firmly on the radiographic table. And to position the part, place the IR under the patient's foot. Parallel with its long axis. And center it to the midline of the level of the base of the third metatarsal. The central ray is perpendicular to the IR at the level base of the third metatarsal. And the structure shown demonstrated the interspaces between the cuboid and continuous, cuboid and fourth and fifth metatarsal, cuboid and the lateral cuboid, and the talus and the vehicular bone. Sinus tarsi are also well demonstrated. Our next projection is plantodorsal calcaneus. To position the patient, the patient is in seated position. And the legs is fully extended. And to position the part, place the IR under the ankle of the patient. And put a long strip of gauze around the ball of the foot. And let the patient hold the ghost to hold the ankle to the right of the ankle of dorsiflexion. And the central ray enters the base of the third metatarsal. Our next projection is the ankle AP and the ankle lateral. The first one is the ankle AP to position the patient. The patient is in seated position and the limb is fully extended. To position the part, adjust the ankle joint to anatomical position to obtain the true AP position. Flex the ankle and the foot to place in the long axis of the foot to the vertical position. The central ray is perpendicular to the ankle joint at the point of midway between the malleum. And the structure shown is the AP projection of ankle joint, the distal ends of tibia and fibula, and the proximal portion of the talus. Our next projection is the ankle lateral. To position the patient, the patient is in supine position. And have the patient turn into the affected side until the ankle joint is in lateral position. And to position the part, place the IR of the long axis parallel to the long axis of the leg of the patient. Ensure that the lateral surface of the foot 
is in the contact with the ion. And the central ray is perpendicular to the ankle joint. Enter into the medial malleolus. And the structure shown is distal, tibia, and fibula, talus, and adjacent tarsal. And the tibiotalar joint are also visualized. Our next projection is ankle mortised AP oblique. To position the patient, the patient is seated at the radiographic table and assist the patient internally rotating the leg and the foot together with 15 to 20 degrees until the intermolecular is in the plane in the parallel of the IR. Center the patient ankle joint to the IR. And the central ray is perpendicular entering to the ankle joint midway between the malignity. And the structure shown is entire ankle mortise joint. Our next projection is Asher Wood 3 projection. The first is lateral medial oblique projection to position the patient. The patient is in semi-supine or seated and flex the patient knee enough to place the ankle joint nearly tight to the angle of flexion and to position the part. The medial border is resting on the IR adjust the leg so that the long axis is the same as in the central ray the central ray is perpendicular to the IR at the point of 1 inch distal and 1 inch of anterior to lateral malignus. And the structure shown is clearly demonstration of the talar articular surface of the calcaneus and the anter anterior subtalar articular surface. Our next projection is APHL oblique medial rotation. To position the patient, the patient is in seated position and extend the legs of the patient. And ask the patient to rotate the leg and the foot medially internally. The central ray is tended to cephalon at the point of one inch distal to the medial malignus. And the structure shown is clearly demonstration of posterior articulations of dollar joint in profile. The next projection is AP axial oblique lateral rotation to position the patient. The patient is in seated position. Extend the leg of the patient. Ask the patient to rotate the leg and the foot in 30 degrees laterally externally. The central ray is angle 15 degrees cephalat. Entering at 1 inch distal to the medial mullions. And the structure shown shows the posterior articular facet, posterior subtalar joint. Our next projection is EAP for the patient position. The patient is in supine position. And extend the leg of the patient and the ankle joint is in contact in the table. And for the patient position, flex the leg and locate the apex on the patella. Adjust the leg by placing the femoral epicondyles parallel to the IR for the true AP projection. The central ray is directed to the center of the 
gauge at a point of 1.3 cm of inferior of the patellar apex. And the structure shown is a view of the distal femur and the proximal tibia and fibula of the anatomical position. Our next projection is knee lateral to position the patient. The patient should be in lateral recumbent with the affected side down. And to position the part, the affected knee is in 20 to 30 degrees. And the pelvis should not be rotated. And the opposite side is extended. And placed behind the affected knee that being examined. The center ray is directed to 5 to 7 degrees cephalon of the knee joint at the point of 1 inch distal to the medial epicondyles. And the structure shown shows the lateral image of the distal ends of the mur, patella, and the knee joint. Our next projection is tangential home blood method and to position the patient. The patient is standing with knee of interest flex and place in the contact in front of the IR kneeling on the table with the affected knee over the IR and center the IR to the apex of the patella and flex the knee in the angle of 70 degrees with full extension and the central ray is perpendicular to the lower leg entering to the midpoint of the IR and the structure shown is the clear image of intercondylar fossa of the femur our next projection is the knee and shell vector method to position the patient, the patient is in supine position and flex the affected knee and up to place the long axis of the femur about um, 60 degrees to the long axis of the tibia. Support the knee on a sandbag. And place the IR under the knee. And the central ray is perpendicular to the long axis of tibia. Entering to the knee joint of 1 inch below the patellar apex. And the structure shown is the intercondylar eminence of the knee joint. Our next projection is knee PA action cup conventry method. For the patient position, the patient is in prone position. To position the part, flex the knee either 40 to 50 degree angle and rest the foot on suitable support. and center the upper half of the IR to the ankle joint and adjust the leg so has no medial or lateral rotation the center ray is perpendicular to the Long axis of the leg 
and centered to the region. And the structure shown is the demonstration of the open intercondylar fossa and the posterior inferior surface of the femoral condyle. Our next projection is merchant method to position the patient. The patient is in supine position with both knees at the end of the radiographic table and flex the knees in 240 degrees. Put the IR on the foot and strap both legs together at, at the half level to control the leg rotation. And the center ray is angled 30 degrees scouted and turned to the midway between the patella. And the structure shown is axial projection of the patella femoral joint and the femoral condyles and the intercondylar sulcus. Our next projection is setting a sprung method to position the patient. The patient should be in front position. And flex the knee until the patella is in perpendicular to the IR. And put a bandage around the ankle. And let the patient hold the bandage. And the central ray is perpendicular to the joint spaces. And the structure shown is provide information about the patella and the patellofemoral articulation. Our next projection is leg AP to position the patient. The patient is in supine position. And give the patient a pillow. And the leg is fully extended. And to position the part, adjust the leg so that the femoral epicondyles are parallel to the IR. And flex the ankle until the foot is vertical. And the central ray is perpendicular to the IR, directed to the midpoint of the leg. And the structure shown is the etar tibia and fibula. Our next projection is leg lateral to position the patient. The patient in, is in supine position and turn the patient towards the affected side. And flex the knee to place the femoral condyle. Perpendicular to the IR for the lateral position. The central ray is perpendicularly directed to the midpoint of the leg, and the structure shown is shows the tibia and fibula, including the adjacent joint. Our next projection is femur AP to position the patient. The patient is in supine position and make sure that the pelvis is not rotated and to position the part. Center the affected thigh in the midline of the IR. The central ray is perpendicular to the mid femur and the center of the IR. And the structure showed demonstrate the femur and the knee joint and the hip. Our next projection is the femur lateral to position the patient. The patient is in supine position and turn the patient towards the affected side and adjust the body position and center the affected thigh to the midline of the grid. 
position the patient. The uppermost limb should be forward. And put a sandbag for the support. And flex the knee into 45 degrees. The central ray is perpendicular to the mid femur and the center of the IR. And the structure shown demonstrates the lateral femur and the adjacent joint.